Thank you for joining us on the test bench. Today, we're building a computer with a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. Hexacore CPU. Yeah, we've got one. 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 DDR4 RAM. A Power Color Red Dragon RX 580 8 gigabyte. A 240 gigabyte SanDisk SSD Plus. A 1.5 terabyte white label Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Special thanks to my friend Snow for the drive. There's a link to his Twitch channel, Snow Official, in the description. Check it out sometime. An 850 watt EVGA BQ semi modular power supply. A set of three Antec Prism ARGB fans. I would like to thank Antec for the fans as I won them in a competition they hosted this summer. An AS Rock X370 Pro 4 motherboard. And it's all going to be mounted in a Vivo Case V07. Today's video is going to be more of a build log than a how to. But we are going to cover some information today that we wouldn't have gotten into in my How to Build a Budget Gaming PC video. We're going to learn how to install a Ryzen processor, how to install an AMD Wraithspire cooler, the kind of considerations you have to have in mind when you're installing a set of really nice fans, and also the things you have to think about with a modular power supply. Like all other computers on this channel, this one has a name, Futsang Lung. Futsang Lung is a Chinese dragon that lives in the underworld, guarding its treasure. Its most prized possession is a pearl that multiplies when touched, symbolizing wisdom. Legend also has it that volcanoes are formed when it bursts out of the ground to fly into the heavens. A good parallel for the burst of power this machine is capable of. Futsang Lung also goes through a multi-stage life cycle beginning as an eel-like being and ending looking like a traditional Chinese dragon, a lot like the upgradability options of AMD's AM4 platform. Ryzen processors have pins in the bottom of them, which you need to be careful with so you don't bend them. Always handle a Ryzen processor by the sides. To install the processor, lift the retention arm on the CPU socket. Next, orient the CPU so the arrow on it lines up with the same symbol on the CPU socket. Then seat the pins in the socket. Wiggle it gently to ensure everything is seated, then lower the retention arm. To install the Wraith Spire cooler, you want the retention plate on the back of the motherboard to have its screws poking through to the front. So, I've stacked the motherboard manual, the case manual, and a couple of rubber pads beneath to push the screw holes up through. From here, it's just a matter of correctly orienting the cooler, and then forcing the spring-loaded screws down into their holes. You want to start your first two screws diagonally from each other. Once you have all the screws partially in, screw them in the rest of the way. Next, you want to connect the fan to the motherboard CPU header and then connect the RGB cable to the Wraith Spire cooler. You'll want the raised clips facing you, as it can only go in one way. You'll then want to connect the RGB cable to an RGB header on the motherboard. Unfortunately, with what we have here, either the RGB cable is bad, or the motherboard RGB headers are bad. I haven't been able to ascertain which yet. I'm hoping. It's just the cable. When installing a modular power supply, you aren't going to need all of your cables. It's smart to take stock of the power cables you need and attach them to the power supply before mounting it. Never use cables from another modular power supply unless you're 1000% sure that they're compatible. Keeping in mind cables from the same brand but different models of power supply often are not compatible. One of the advantages to naming computers like I do is you can pack the unneeded cables back into the power supply box and then write that computer's name on it so you don't lose track of which machine they belong to. The problem with the fans that came with our case is that as nice as they might look, you either have a Molex connector or a three pin connector. They aren't PWM, which means they're always going to spin at a constant speed and be as loud as possible. Which I guess would be fine if we were in North Korea, but that isn't how we do it around here. We're installing Antec Prism fans so we can get our dose of RGB in us and keep the system nicely cooled. 
We want to install the fans by screwing in the opposite corners, and the exact process is going to vary case by case. What is not going to vary is we want to train our wires through the cable management hole we'll be using on the case before we mount the fan. When dealing with RGB fans, and I've only seen one exception, we'll be dealing with a lot of extra wires. We're handling this here by creatively using these cooling vents for hard drives by routing the ARGB connectors and PMW connectors through it. When installing a fan controller like this, you will always want to position it so all the wires take the most direct route to it, and of course so all the wires can reach it, to make everything look as clean as possible. Mmm, perfection. Join us in the coming weeks when we benchmark Futsang Lung, review Antex Prism fans, review Vivo's Case V07, and also join us for a very special video where we get the answer out of this computer that I've been looking for. And now let me leave you with a montage of me building Futsang Lung.
like this video and subscribe to the test bench. Feel free to join us on Facebook. Back us on Patreon if you want to help us show you more cool stuff. And follow us on Twitter. You'll find clickable links in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out our other videos.